Essentially, an ion thruster is just an open-ended particle accelerator strapped to the back of a spaceship, pointed backwards. This might just be the shortest video I've ever made. <laughs> Now there is actually a bit more to say about ion thrusters because they are in fact rather interesting devices and what is perhaps even more interesting than how they work is the reason why we use them but we're going to take a look at that later on in the video. First of all let's just take a look at how one of these devices actually operates. So here's a schematic drawing that I've made of an ion thruster. So it all starts off in a some sort of propellant storage tank. So we have some sort of tank or container uh, that is filled with some sort of a gas because an ion thruster uses gas as the propellant. So you can see that that gas will then flow through a pipe into the actual ion thruster. But the gas is not the only thing that enters the ion thruster. You can see that there is also an electron gun placed right at the beginning over there and that electron gun is going to fire electrons into the ion thruster. So we have gas and electrons going into the device. Now these electrons are then going to run into these gas molecules and as a result of that these gas molecules start losing electrons themselves making them positively charged. So we now get positively charged gas molecules. And positively charged molecules or atoms, those are what we call ions. So we now call them positive ions. But they're still just these gas molecules, just with a little bit fewer electrons. Now, these ions will then enter the last part of the ion thruster, which you can see consists of two grids. One of these grids is positively charged, and the other one is negatively charged, the one at the back. Which means that there is an electric field between these two grids, kind of like how there is an electric field between the two charged plates in a capacitor. And so what's going to happen is these positive ions enter the space between these two grids, and then the ions will get accelerated by the electric field, they will fly through the second grid at the back of the ion thruster and they will fly out into space at a high speed and that is your high speed beam of ions that creates the thrust of the ion thruster. So at this point you might be wondering why did we need to ionize the gas in the first place? Why don't we just accelerate the neutral gas molecules with the electric field? Well that's because an electric field only applies a force to a charged object. In this case, because we have positive ions, we have the negative electrode at the back of the spacecraft so that the positive ions move towards the back. So now let's move on to the second question. Why would you use a device like this? You know, why wouldn't you just use some other type of thruster, you know, a chemical rocket engine or a, a gas thruster or something like that? Why would you use specifically this type of thruster? What makes it so interesting? Well, what makes it interesting is the exit speed of these ions. Let's take a look at some very basic principles of spacecraft propulsion. A spacecraft propels itself by propelling some kind of propellant, some kind of mass, out the back of the spacecraft. So what it does is it gives momentum to the propellant, so it throws the propellant out the back, and that gives an equal momentum to the spacecraft, but of course in the opposite direction. Now momentum is equal to mass times velocity. And this is where it gets very interesting because if you would cut the amount of propellant in half but double the speed, then what you could do is you could achieve the same momentum using only half the propellant. So what this means is that if your exit speed of the propellant is greater, you need a smaller amount of propellant to achieve a given momentum. So your propellant economy, if you will, is better. And this is where the ion thruster comes in because the exit speed of the ions coming out of the back of an ion thruster is easily 10 times greater than the exit speed of, say, gases coming from a chemical rocket. And because the exit speed of these ions are so great, we can achieve a given momentum using a relatively very small amount 
of propellant, meaning that you can build a spacecraft that can achieve a very great speed in space using a very small tank of propellant compared to how much you would need if you were to use some other type of thruster. So that sounds great, right? Let's put ion thrusters on everything. Well, unfortunately, they do have one great drawback, which is their thrust. You see, we talked about how they can achieve a given amount of uh, momentum using a smaller amount of propellant. We didn't talk about how long they take to do that because their actual thrust level is extremely small. The thrust of ion thrusters that have been used so far have all been less than one kilogram. Okay, less than one kilogram. Imagine how little that is if you consider that the spaceship that they're put on can weigh hundreds or even thousands of kilograms. So the thrust of these things is absolutely tiny, which is no problem if you're in space, because in space you can just turn on the engine and you can just wait for two weeks for the spaceship to accelerate up to speed and that's not really a problem because you just keep accelerating and accelerating because there are no drag forces holding you back, right? But here on Earth, it's a completely different story. If you want to, let's say, launch a spaceship into orbit, well, you need to overcome lots of gravity and drag, you know, air resistance, and so you need the engine to provide a certain amount of thrust. Here on Earth, you need something that can provide that raw power that you need to overcome all of these drag forces, and that's something that an ion thruster really isn't capable of doing. So what we do is we launch a spaceship using a conventional rocket because that can provide very large amount of thrust to get stuff into orbit. And then when the spaceship is in space, then we turn on an ion thruster because in space we can make proper use of its very good propellant economy. By the way, another advantage of ion thrusters is that the energy that they use doesn't come from the propellant. So in a chemical rocket, the energy, so the propellant itself is also used as the energy source, right? So it's not just used as mass to throw out the back. It also contains the energy that actually powers the thing, chemical energy, right? Whereas the ion thruster doesn't have its energy stored in its propellant, but takes its energy from some electrical power source. So for example, from solar panels, or even for space vehicles that need to travel very far from the sun, it can take its energy from a nuclear device, which I think is very awesome. Anyway, that's enough talk about ion thrusters. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course, thank you for watching.